Dinosaur cloning and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom impression. This video will reveal the truth about cloning. What is cloning? How is it possible? Can we really clone dinosaurs? And why do I think that Fallen Kingdom is the best Jurassic Park movie since the OG? Hey, don't shut this off yet. Keep an open mind. Oh, and spoiler alert, did you watch the movie yet? Because if not, actually I don't really get into Jurassic World spoilers until later in the video, so I'll warn you once we get there. First, let's talk about cloning. Doug, you're cloned. In the Jurassic Park movies, the original concept of cloning, as you might already know, is based on extracting dino DNA from mosquitoes preserved in amber that ate the blood of dinosaurs from millions and millions of years ago, filling in missing parts of that DNA sequence with some sort of frog DNA, and then injecting the completed DNA sequence into an ostrich egg, and boom! Baby dinosaurs. Oh, it's so cute. I'll name her Stella. Oh god, Stella, no! Stella! Okay, we know this wouldn't work in real life because the extracted DNA would likely be contaminated with mosquito DNA and whatnot, and the molecular structure of DNA, even preserved in amber, wouldn't be able to last that long. But then we have the problem of the ostrich egg. And to understand that, we really need to understand cloning a little better. So if you are proficient in cell biology, or you listen to my science parody song, Love Your Cells, linked in the description below, you'll know that DNA is contained inside animal cells, not only in the nucleus, most of it is in the nucleus, yes, thank you, past me, but also, some's inside your mitochondria. That's right, DNA is found in both the nucleus and the mitochondria. The DNA that comes together when the man and woman love each other. Also, a variety of other circumstances. Let's not be stuck in the 1950s here. Well, that DNA is called nuclear DNA and is found in the nucleus. Most of it is in the nucleus. This is presumably the dino DNA sequence injected into the egg cell in Jurassic Park. But what about mitochondrial DNA? Some's inside your mitochondria. Well, mitochondrial DNA. It's all from the mama. Sorry, boys. And the science here, it gets a little muddied for me because we are talking a little bit about a hypothetical situation. Wait a minute, how do, how do you interrupt the cellular mitosis? But in real life, both mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA are necessary for cell replication, and cell replication is necessary to build a living thing. So if we have nuclear DNA, like dino DNA, and want to grow a living thing, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> We first need an egg cell, which will contain both mitochondria with mitochondrial DNA and a nucleus with nuclear DNA, and then we would replace the nuclear DNA with the DNA of what we want to grow. Or, in the case of real life cloning, we might just replace the entire nucleus. But we can't just use any egg cell for cloning. It's important that the egg cell used is somewhat closely related in terms of an animal's phylogeny which essentially means its place on the evolutionary tree of life. Ideally, to clone an animal, you would use an egg cell from the same animal, like when they cloned Dolly the sheep back in 1996. <laughs> they used a sheep egg cell. And this is because in order for cells to divide successfully, the nuclear genome must undergo proper gene expression, which requires compatible mitochondrial DNA. The takeaway from this is that we need compatible mitochondria, and so a compatible egg. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an egg donated from the exact animal, which is why it seems like it could be viable that dinosaurs were created using ostrich eggs. But they need to be somewhat close, and phylogenetically speaking, ostriches and dinosaurs are likely just too far apart on that tree for successful nuclear gene expression. So what's happening with cloning these days? There's been a ton of unsuccessful attempts and some successful attempts, like these two monkeys from an article just released this year which is breaking the barrier to human cloning. But it's not just scientific barriers that have kept us from human cloning, because studies have been attempted and terminated. It's also ethical barriers. The arguments are put out henceforth by two great characters. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Absolutely, Dr. Malcolm, that is an excellent point. Dr. Hammond, your rebuttal? I mean, how can we stand in the light of discovery and, and not act? Oof, that is, well, yeah, he, he makes a good point there, too. Dr. Malcolm? That is one big pile of shit. Oh, okay, okay. Jump ahead 25 years to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And spoiler alert for real this time. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want any spoilers, stop the video now and come back later. Okay, did you? Are you? You're... You're still here, so I'm just gonna... They cloned a human! More on that later. So, 25 years after the original Jurassic Park, 
And the dinosaur's existence is now a fact of life. There are now entire generations that grew up with this reality that dinosaurs exist. The movie opens with one of my favorite men, Mr. Jeff Goldblum, portraying Dr. Malcolm once again, warning us, nay, imploring us to let these dinosaurs die off in a natural way. That natural way being an impending volcanic explosion on Isla or Isla Nublar about to wipe them all out. And just to note, we are going to ignore, as Jurassic World did, the existence of another island of dinosaurs from lesser successful movies in the franchise. So Dr. Malcolm says we should let the dinosaurs die, but it's more complicated now ethically. Because whereas the ethics of creating dinosaurs was the issue in the first movie, and those ethics were overshadowed by the quest for discovery by Dr. Hammond, now there's the ethical dilemma of destroying an entire order of creatures that exist, that were brought back into existence, and it's not their fault they were created, and so is letting them die when we have the option to save them just another way of playing God and yeah, this is why I think J.A. Bayona, Colin Trevorrow, and Derek Connolly are creative geniuses for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom because it is morally complex. Sorry, not sorry. Stay with me. The ethics of scientific discovery, the philosophies that we live by, the flexibility and open-mindedness that we must have as science and technology and society evolves, it's so important. And we are so quick to take sides these days, way too quick. There's so much us versus them. There's so much name calling and really not enough productive conversations of understanding being had. And so I really appreciate the complexity of these themes in Fallen Kingdom. Don't eviscerate me here. Remember, there's too much name calling in the world already. Uh, but for me, it kind of evokes the complexity of The Last Jedi in terms of right and wrong and perspective. When Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom starts out, I was with Dr. Malcolm. Maybe the volcano was the world's natural way of eradicating dinosaurs once more. After all... Dinosaurs uh, uh, had their shot and nature selected them for extinction. But soon we see the other side of things. These creatures didn't ask to be born. Sure, they're unnatural creations by humans, but then again, so is this character. And what the movie achieves by this analogy is the question, since she was a clone, since her creation was so morally apprehensible that it actually drove Dr. Hammond and his partner apart many years ago, well, does that mean that she deserves to die too? Okay, I know what you're thinking. But she's a human, not a world-destructing monstrosity of genocide. First of all, I hear you, not that the two have to be mutually exclusive, but there's another side to everything. Even creatures that can destroy, well, they're still living things capable of inciting empathy, and this was done really well in Fallen Kingdom, when the writers and director tugged at our heartstrings with a multitude of filmmaking choices that incited all the feels, from the Brachiosaurus to Jeff Goldblum. There's a lot of controversy in the ending of the movie for me because it's hard to disagree with the choice the little girl made to press the button and release the dinosaurs into the world. I mean, could you sit there and watch a bunch of helpless creatures die like that if given the choice? <laughs> but now, the world these characters live in, it's a different world now. The humans are not at the top of the food chain, and that is terrifying. But is that the fault of those who decided to show mercy to the dinosaurs and let them live? Or is it the fault of those who created the dinosaurs in the first place? Or is all of this just a part of the process of scientific discovery and exploration. I mean, is it really unnatural if we're a part of the natural world? Look, no matter what your opinion, there are so many philosophical questions, all stemming from the movie Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and for that, I appreciated it very much. I hope you enjoyed. That is all for this episode, everyone. I could obviously go on and on and on about all of this, but for now, I want to hear your thoughts on the science and ethics of cloning, on the movie, and other videos that you might want to see here. But please, I'm asking you kind of personally, keep it civil in the comments, because I would really love to harbor a safe forum here on my channel for people to have responsible and controversial discussions. And I know that the internet and this camera is between us all, but we are way more complex beings than we give each other credit for. So please be kind and thank you for watching.